man, last year tried to beat my ass. Well, can I cuss early? I don't know how to do videos anymore. I guess I should address it first. Yes, I did get a haircut. Thank you for noticing. Also, did you know that if you want your videos to exist that you like have to make them? That seems kind of homophobic to me. Right, so 2023, surprisingly good entertainment year. A lot of good movies, some good games. But what I want to focus on today is music because, man, there was a lot of good music. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a quick, and by quick, I mean I hope it's quick, rundown of my favorite albums of the year. Quick rules for this, no reissues or special albums, no cover albums. And for my yearly list, I go from November to November. So if it came out in November, December of 2022, it's free real estate and finally as much as it pains me there will be no eps in the final track listings but i will give a quick shout out to several that i absolutely adored all right so let's get cracking with some honorable mentions moments elsewhere is equal parts ferocious and melodic it's filled with infectious hooks whirlwind riffs and some breakdowns that'll have you trying to crowd kill in your bedroom highly suggested this is their best album since Come Clarity, bar none. It's a mix of their older tried and true formula with just enough modern touches so it doesn't feel stale. Now this album is as focused as it is completely off the wall and it hinged at times. This is the most Avatar album to ever be an Avatar album. Not many albums can have blast beats and old surf style doo-wop just in the same track list. It's all over the place in a very good way. Seven Dust is one of the most consistent bands on the planet, and this album is honestly no different. I don't mean that as a negative, quite the opposite really. Sometimes it's nice to know what you're getting when you load up an album. And Truth Killer is a Seven Dust album. I feel like I use that acronym, not acronym. I don't know what words mean for words anymore. So anyway, I'm gonna to get to the top 10. Let's have some fun. I am a sucker for production and sound design that scratches my brain in a really interesting way. Good Night, God Bless is that from start to finish. This is an album I put on when I just want to lose myself. The dense production of Sean Lopez mixed with the distinctive airy voice of Chino is a combination that works like peanut butter and jelly. And while the production feels like the Star of Crosses, at least to me, this is some of Chino's best vocal work since Diamond Eyes. Whether he's crooning his heart out on tracks like Found or Last Rites, or flexing some musical muscles he's not stretched in years, like on my personal favorite track, Big Youth, which features an LP jump scare that feels just a little too right. Either way, Chino is in rare form here. This album made me a fan. And funny story, as I'm recording the voiceover for this video, I'm listening to this album. Now this is some of my favorite dance pop R&B in quite a while, and what really pisses me off about this is that it's just a hobby according to Miss Bad Movies and the Beat. Though if this is just a hobby, a side gig if you will, what you have is a collection of some really tightly written and beautifully produced tracks accompanied by some lush vocal performances. Standout moments include the vocal breakdown in Tahitian Rose near the end that pan side to side is really good, and that funky bass line for Easy. And like, listen, if you can listen to Against the Wall and not have that first verse lodged in your head, you aren't human in any way that matters. My only real gripe with the album is also one that I can't knock it for, and that's the length. Coming in at a breezy 30 minutes, it doesn't overstay its welcome, but lends itself very well to repeated listens throughout the day. Oh man, you got your metal core in my death core again. No, 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 you got your death core in my death Something, metal something, core. musical Reese's Cup. This album is fierce. Absolutely just an album to be pissed off to. But for how angry and misanthropic the song gets, they are chock full of melodies and unorthodox hook that just, it makes the anger fun. A huge part of the fun and the charm of this anger is the absolute force of nature that is Taylor Barber, who flexes his vocal range all over this album, from goblin screeches to weighty screams, gravel churning vocals, and some really anthemic sing-along clean vocals. It's time for that call. Now, did you happen to pack a lunch? This one took me a little bit by surprise, I'm not gonna lie. It's a deceptively weird album made by a genuinely weird guy who just leans into it. Prof's beat work on this album is all over the place and unique. Listen to the madness that is the title track compared to anything else on the radio right now. Prof has a habit of just gliding over any kind of beat in front of him with some really fun wordplay and delivery that's off kilter in a way that makes it fun to rap or sing along to. 
bolstered by some utterly fierce guest verses from the likes of Red Man on Pack a Lunch and Kevin Gates on Devil's Gate, it fills the album with unusual bangers, but bangers for sure. As a band, Silosis isn't fair. Josh Middleton is one of the best riff writers in the modern metal sphere right now. His ability to just churn out these razor sharp, groovy, thrash flavored riffs while not sounding like he's stuck 40 years in the past is something that should be studied. Now combine that with the tastiest lead work outside of Revocation or Animals as Leaders and you have a modern legend. And that's not to diminish the rest of the band either, especially drummer Ali Richardson, who I swear has to be a cyborg sent from the future where if you don't keep perfect time, they cut off your thumbs and they turn you into a walrus. This album is the most finely tuned piece of work that Silosis has put out without exception. It's equal parts anthemic, thrashy, heavy, and emotional. A Sign of Things to Come is one of those albums that's a full experience. The songs do stand very firmly on their own, with tracks like Absent, Poison for the Lost, and the title track being my personal favorites. But the entire album experience is something that you should allow yourself a chance to just take in one day. Grab some headphones, throw it on, toss this album on, and just feel it. I never understood why Winger has such a, like, stinky reputation about them. Since they came back with four, they have been putting out some absolutely banger progressive tinged hard rock albums, and seven is a continuation of that trim. It's filled to the brim with massive hooks, soaring vocals, and some inspired guitar work. Tracks like Tears of Blood and One Light to Burn have a commanding swagger to them, while tracks like Stick in the Knife and Twist and Time Bomb have some of the heaviest guitar riffs on the album. And it's all brought together by some impressive vocal performances by Kip. Seriously. For this man to be in his 60s, he has not missed a step vocally. I honestly say he sounds better now than he did earlier in his career. Winger has refined and distilled their sound down to some of the best modern rock. This album is solid and you should just go listen to it after you finish this video and comment and send a like and then watch it again, then go listen to Seven. I need the money. I don't I will not be able to monetize this video, I'm realizing. Oh, no. Look, it's Sleep Token. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this album because it's been talked about all over the internet. So here are the cryptid notes. Album great, nearly perfect sequences. Vessel is on his A game. Two's drumming is immaculate. Ascensionism and Rain are the best tracks. Do You Wish That You Love Me is my least favorite track to listen to alone, but in the flow of the album, it works perfectly. Next. Hey, kid, come here. Do you like guitars? You like riffs and big choruses? Do you like your songwriting to be mature and exciting? Well, here, this album's for you. The second album from Wolfgang Van Halen is just as massive as the animal he takes his name from. Wolfgang proves himself to be a jack of all trades, playing every instrument and handling vocals on this bad boy. Except for the wall on I'm All Right. Shout out to my boy Patrick. But. Jokes aside, this album is a force to be reckoned with. It's heavy when it needs to be, it's dark when it needs to be, it can be light and hopeful when it needs to be. It's an emotional album that grabs you by the collar and makes you pay attention. Then it calls you a fucking grape. I feel like it wouldn't be hyperbole to say that the last couple years have kinda sucked farts. Just an absolute rancid sore of a couple years. On a massive scale, everybody's been going through it, and personally, I've been dealing with a lot, which is one of the reasons why this channel has been in a medically induced coma. I say all that to say that The Surface has been one of the most emotionally cathartic albums that I've listened to. It's been a while since I've connected with an album outside of, ah yeah, this beat go crazy. It's an album about personal growth, self-love, self-empowerment, standing up for yourself, and it just, it hit me at a time where I really needed to hear that. I could talk about how it's Beartooth's most melodically forward-thinking album, or diverse, or fun, and while these are great points to the album, the reason I loved it so much is because it made me feel good. I hate having emotions. Just rip them out of me, bro. Controversial, yet true, factual statement. He is Legend have never put out a bad album. Endless Hallway is a culmination of almost 20 years of songwriting and storytelling of their long-running China White narrative. But all that aside, this album, this album here, this bad boy, this is quintessential listening, fan or no fan. From the opening barrage of The Prowler to the odd musical wind-up of Circus Circus, the tech death rock and roll breakdown of the title track, or the slush drench pseudo ballad of the closing track, this album is a band that starts on all cylinders and then they steal other cylinders because they want to go harder. 
If you couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of the album experience. I digest an album like some people digest movies. Pacing is a very important part of that, and as far as albums go, this one's perfect. I don't think I can rightly put into words just how great this album is or how great this band is outside of, hey, I love these guys since I was in high school and you should check them out. But hey, I've loved these guys since I was in high school and you're missing out on some phenomenal music by not checking them out. So yeah, uh, that's my list. That was the video. And I think every time I've done one of these, I've been like, I'll try and do up, like I, it'll happen. I'm sure it'll happen. But seriously, uh, thank you for watching. I do have some things planned, some things coming very soon for this channel and not my music channel, which has been slightly more active. I'll link to that below. But if you are following me here, chances are you're already following me there. But if not, why not? Um, I will see you next video. Cause like I said, I have something planned. I also have something planned for not Valentine's Day, but the day after Valentine's Day that has nothing to do with Valentine's. Uh, see you then. Bye. Oh, shit. Like, so I don't feel like doing that. You know what to do. YouTube's been around for a thousand years. If you don't know what to do now, you're a baby. Get off the internet, you baby.